Hello there gang and welcome to another episode of Displaying Model Behaviour, the Earth's mightiest video podcast. So take off your pants, crack a beer and let's talk toys. Let's talk about the Kyoto Revoltech Thor. This guy has literally just landed at Model Behaviour Towers and I got a few things to say. So let's talk about him. But before we do, I'd like to give a shout out to Into the AM who are sponsoring this channel and also providing me with some badass graphic design t-shirts. If you like this, they have it, and many other styles as well, over at intotheam.com. Don't worry though, you don't need to type out the address, just click the link in the description below, because if you do that, you get an extra 10% off because you're one of the Model Behavior Good Brothers. And they got some badass designs there, and by buying something from them, it helps support this channel, keeps the lights on, and lets me buy dubious action figures sometimes. I admit some of my choices are better than, than others. Is this Thor one of the good ones? Well, we're gonna find out right now. So first of all, as we always do, we can take a look at the box on the ludicrously expensive Spinatron 5000. And I gotta say, the new designs for these Revoltech boxes, I kinda like them, there's a real uniformity to them. I enjoyed the old comic book styles, they were really cool, but this is very sleek. This is like if you're buying a Thor action figure from the Apple store. And then we get him out of the packaging and on a display stand with the effects. Oh my goodness. This guy pops. He really, really does. This is a figure that was designed for dynamic posing and he looks badass when you get it right. But there are some highs, lows and middles to this figure and we're going to talk about them all. So first off, the initial impression and the bottom line is... This is great. Instantly out of the box. That's really, really good. Because I wasn't too sure. Because I saw him in a display case in Yodabashi camera and I was like, he looks dynamic, but it looks a little bit orangey. I'm very happy to say that he is not half as oompa as he might look in some pictures. Because he does definitely have a little bit of an Essex tan going on but it actually does kind of fit with the style because occasionally you might get a figure and you see the skin tone and it's like, oh, geez, I, I don't know about that, guys. Was, was that your intention or was that just how it came out and you thought, ah, we'll go with it. But this actually works. And I'll go one further. The actual, I'm using actual a lot. I don't want, I'm not going to edit that. <laughs> the, the shadows and shading on the muscles give out some real nice definition. It's not just one flat skin tone. I don't know whether it's a dry air brush wash, whatever, whatever it is. There's, there, there's real dark shadows and shading that make all the veins pop. This is a veiny Thor. You're so vain. You probably think this review's about you. Well, it is, because you deserve a review of your own, because you've got some good things going on here. So all of the biceps, the triceps, the deltoids, it, they, they are literally, they're popping. Because this, this, this dude, like, he, he's full on Dragon Ball Z style, God of Thunder going into battle, and that's what I wanted for Thor, because for ages I've had the 80th anniversary Marvel legend, and, and he's good. He's good for what he is, but he just has such a bored, static, stoic face. And then when the Mafex came out, I thought, oh great, finally, I'm gonna have a cloth cape and, and an uh, going into battle type face, but we know the Mafex was a bit underwhelming. Then finally, Revoltech, have they put all the pieces in place? We got the cloth cape, we got dynamic poses, and we have a whole ton of faces. So at the moment, I've got him with the ah, and also with the McFarlane side eye as well, which I know a lot of people don't like the whole side eye looking off in a different direction kind of pose, but that's great. You got ton to choose from. It's, it's not like you're limited to this. He's, he's got a whole bunch of face portraits. So I'm just going for this one because I'm putting him in various dynamic swinging his hammer, charging into battle type poses. So that works really well in that regard. So the skin tone's great. I'm, I'm fine with that. And especially the wash that goes over the top, that really does just, you know, bring it. It brings it over the top. It makes it work really well. Then if we go to the actual body itself, the texture, 
everything has texture. That's what I'm trying to say. Texture exists on everything. So his tunic, his uh, the, the, the metal plates, the armor, going down to his boots, which I guess are meant to be like a, a leather. They have a kind of a leather hide to them. Very little on this figure is smooth. It all feels like a real world kind of equipment. That's really, really great. And then he's got some interesting tooling and sculpting going on with his waist kind of, uh, the, the, the material that, that should be going around his waist. This obviously is plastic. This is uh, meant to be like, they, they could have done it with soft goods, I guess. But you know, we got the soft goods cape. So they're like, you're not getting all soft goods. This, this ain't a Mezco figure, all right, pal? Slow your roll. So instead we got these plastic sections that kind of articulate around his waist. And honestly, it actually works because if you want to get the legs up and put him into a more dynamic kind of pose, it, they, they sort of bend and flex and it, it does kind of break up the, the lines of the belt. But actually, it's kind of okay because with many other figures, if they just have one solid plastic piece around their waist, when you twist them at the hips, then that, that, bel that, that belt starts to bend and warp and ultimately it's going to, you know, distort the figure. Whereas here, because they're actually on pivots and hinges and pegs, you can move them around and it doesn't compromise the actual sculpt. So I'm kind of okay with that. I'm kind of okay with that. Then we have the, what I would term, slightly unusual, <laughs> the slightly weird Revoltek upper torso uh, articulation, where he's got these sort of shoulder butterfly swivel things. I mean, it's, it, it is unusual. It's a choice. It's a choice, Revoltek, and they've been sticking with it for a long time, so I guess it works. I mean, it does allow you quite a large range of motion, and amazingly, they do seem to tessellate quite well. They've been using this style for years, and some of it it's implemented horribly, like in their Venom that came out many years ago, which I stupidly bought, which is literally the worst action figure I've ever bought. Might do a review on that one day. It's the worst. Whereas this, th this all sort of tessellates and sits quite nicely. So even if you bend the, the shoulder pieces back, it still kind of fits his, his body. There's no big gaps or anything. And that takes me to my next point. Anytime you articulate anything on this figure, buttery smooth, buttery smooth. And that's another big point as well not too smooth because my Revoltek Black Panther, my Revoltek Deadpool, oh, they got some wibbly wobbly joints now, baby. They got some, their, their, their knees are almost as bad as my knees. They, they are flawed in that regard. Whereas this Thor, you got, you got, got a couple of very satisfying squeaks when you move his joints because they're nice and tight. That's what you need. So hopefully those are getting better because th this dude, he will stand. He's going to stand tall. He's not going to topple over from weak knees or ankles, which is nice. And another thing that they've improved, which needed to be improved, is the shoulder joints because it, it is an, it's an interesting design style. And figure arts do it as well. It's, it, it's the ball peg shoulders, which sometimes when you lift up the arms, then you get a huge amount of space and, and just air in the shoulder. What they've done here though is they've really thickened up. They've thickened up the deltoid where it attaches to, to the torso. So when you do move his arms up, it, it still fills in the gaps. It just kind of looks like he's got very deep armpits. So that, that kind of works as long as there's no air there. I'm okay with that. So that's actually all right. And just the way that his arms are articulated, the way that the, the forearms go into the biceps that go into the delts, I love the way that they all sort of tessellate and fit like a puzzle piece. It's just very satisfying to play around with. I've always said that with Revoltek figures, that, that moving them and articulating them and posing them, it's a bit like a Rubik's Cube. It's not just a case of bend, bend, bend. You've got to sort of work things around, sort of tessellate, slide things into place. And I actually find that really satisfying. So then finally, we're going to go up to, to the head. And dude, I love I love the, the helmet design. It's, it's not the classic Thor look, but that's okay, because I think the kind of, the, the bowl cut looking helmet, it, it, it always looks a little bit derpy, to be honest. I much prefer this more Norse battle kind of helmet. It always just looks more badass, I think. And this is actually an articulated helmet, which is interesting. You've got the, the, the front piece, and then you've got the back piece over his hair as well, which actually is great, because this is another thing. 
Bravo, Revoltech. I just realized that. Because they've got the articulated helmet with the, with the hair on the back on a ball peg of its own, that means that this Thor can look up. He can actually look up. Oh my goodness, I didn't even clock that until I was thinking about it. Because that's something that I've always said. It's like, okay, this character with long hair can't look up, but you know, what are you going to do? And Revoltech said, well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll just put the hair on a ball peg. Man, that's okay. You get some extra points for that. You, <laughs> you get some extra points right there. So also, I'm, I, I, can, I can see now from where I've, I've been bending it, his actual whole neck below, oh, I just bashed my microphone. The whole neck below there is, is on a, a ball peg swivel as well. So you can really get a lot of range of motion here. It's good stuff for Voltec. That's, that's real nice. And then the cape itself, of course, a wired cape and it's thick. This is a thick, regal cape. I really, really like that. And the way that it, it, it pins in, sort of pegs in with his armor at the top there, man, yeah, those around the collarbones really bring out sort of the, the, the physique of the character. Dude, you, you're seeing me get more appreciation for this figure in real time. And of course, just little extras or little extra attentions to detail, like his, his gloves, the, the spikes around there. It's a very modern looking Thor design, but I like this. I love the mixing up. You know, my Avengers display, it's always going to be different styles. So I, I really like this look. The face, you know, it's, your mileage is going to vary depending on how much you like anime designs. Me, I don't want a full anime set. But I actually like having some anime influence mixed in with my Legends and my Mezcos and my Mayfexes and my Selects. I'm a funny cat like that. So this, this is going to go beautifully. And then, boy howdy, have we got a whole lot of accessories as well. I mentioned the face sculpts. you got loads of different face sculpts. So that, that, that's great. You can have them stoic charging into battle, full-on Dragon Ball, da, white eyes, God of Thunder look. So, so many different display options there. A whole bunch of hands as well. That's really, really nice. And then so many lightning effects. A whole smorgasbord of lightning effects that you can attach to the hammer and have all around him going up his body, crackling with energy. So it's an expensive figure because Revoltech are expensive, especially you got to go for import prices. Luckily, being in Japan, it's it, it, it's it's cheaper. It's actually not a hell of a lot cheaper, but you do expect more. You should expect more because of what you're paying. But then again, I was saying this about Marvel Legends the other day. I would happily pay more for just you know more bespoke Marvel Legends that have more accessories, that have more custom tailoring sculpting just for them. I want the best version of a character, not just one that's done just for the sake of having that character, you know? This, this is the best that they could possibly do, I feel, with this new Thor design. They've gone all in and it really, really works. So you can see here, there are so many lightning effects. This is really, really great. And you can put them in all different combinations and different places. So there's not one set style for them, which honestly, I don't like. With my obsessive compulsive brain, I need to know where everything goes. But actually, you have a lot of freedom. And there's a different hammer head as well with some holes in that you can place the lightning into. That's a nice touch. It would have been nice though, or nicer, if we had a hammer with the inscription, whosoever holds this hammer, if he be worthy. We, we don't have that. So that's kind of missing, but I guess that's maybe more of a retro kind of style. And this is a very modern Thor. Something that is conspicuous by its absence though, is a spinning hammer. That's a real shame. That's something that the legends and the Mafex actually have over this. Where's the spinning hammer? Because you know what? They did provide one as an exclusive for direct orders, but you know what? It looked rubbish. <laughs> I'll try and find a picture if I can do, but it, it looked like a breath mint. I'm like, this? No, th this ain't it, dog. So that's kind of a shame because this dude with a spinning hammer, oh, ho, ho, that would have been the bomb. But still, all of the lightning effects, they look nice. I want to do some size comparisons because this is something very important for the God of Thunder, which I gotta say does fall down just a teeny tiny little bit. You can see next to some other figures here, we've got the Revoltech Deadpool, we've got a Marvel Legends Spider-Man on, on the Renew Your Vows buck, and even the Mafex Thor. 
He doesn't scale as big as I would have liked. Thor should be towering above his Avengers teammates. Not like crazy so, he's not a giant, but he should clearly be, I feel, the biggest of the bunch. The dude is a god. Whereas here, he is taller, but he's not as dominating as I would like to see him be. I mean, the biggest problem that I had with the Mafex Thor is that he's too small and too slight. And this one is only slightly bigger, but then again, he's a heck of a lot thicker and more jacked, and that really adds to it. All you short kings out there, you know if you don't have the height, you can always just kind of bulk up and you know, look a bit more intimidating and more power to you. Whereas Thor, he, he's got the bulk, but because he is a god of thunder, it would be nice to have him a little bit taller. But honestly, let's face it, in my display, he's going to be in a flight stand. He's going to be in a crazy dynamic pose. There's going to be thunder and lightning crackling all around him. A couple of inches in perspective height, it's not going to make much of a difference. But i got to call it like I see it, so he's not quite perfect. But boy, is he close. All right, now let's give him a grade. So as a final grade for the Revoltech Thor, I am going to give this guy four stars out of five with a BOOM seal of model behavior. I really wanted to give this guy five stars, but he's just a little bit too short. If he was a bit taller, a bit more dominating, then he would have got that five. But I still give him the seal of model behavior because I love so much about him. And gang, that does it for my review of Revoltech Thor. What do you think about this character? Comment below and let me know. Do you like the anime art style or does that kill it for you? I gotta say, I love mixing up my displays, so that works really well for me. And just the buttery smoothness of the joints and the articulation, the thought they've put into making the costume and the hair and everything work for posing, and then the gorgeous regal thick red cape, yeah. I, I really, really love this. Revoltech, they have been improving their game so much over the last year, and it really shows. So gang, thank you so much for watching. If you want to support the channel, check out the sponsor link in the description below. And I stand by what I said. If anyone buys any t-shirts from Into the AM, send me a proof of purchase, and I will hand sketch you a little piece of bespoke mole behavior art and post that off to you as a little thank you for helping out the channel. You can put it on your fridge and go, <laughs> he's a grown man and that's the best he could do bless his heart. So gang, thank you for watching and until next time, keep displaying model behavior.